Hi, it's Honda the Honda Mechanin again from Glasgow, and uh, for today's little video update, I wanted to talk about uh, how I've basically been killing time while I've been here in Glasgow. As everybody knows, probably, that I love watching movies, and of course, while I've been here in Glasgow, I've bought quite a few DVDs, in fact, here's all of them, or almost all of them, and I decided in this video I'd just show you and uh, comment on a few words about the movies that I've bought since I've been since I've been here. I gotta show this one. I bought this today. I haven't watched it yet, and I haven't seen the movie before. But I decided I, I wanted to see a scary movie uh, for a change. And here it is, Blair Witch Project. Still got the plastic on it. I haven't even taken it out of that yet. I gotta go through these movies in the order that I've seen them, um, more or less. Uh, the first movie that I got. Well, I don't want to be. I don't want the first DVD that I bought in Scotland to be a boring film. And this is a movie that I had intended to go see in the theaters, but I hadn't gone. The Green Hornet. And I'm not a Seth Rogen fan by any means, just to get that out of the way. But I thought this movie was pretty hilarious. I I've watched the original television show, and I'd say that this movie is not really a, a sort of a serious adaptation of the. Um, uh, of that uh, TV show, it, it almost comes off as a parody of it. But like I said, I, uh, it, it was really funny. Christoph Waltz is the villain in this one, and you know, ever since Inglorious Bastards, I've been a huge Christoph Waltz fan, and you know, he's funny in this one definitely. Um, then this is a this is a horror movie um, that I saw maybe uh, for the first time when I was around 10, so I was way too young to watch this. A friend of mine showed it, showed, showed it to me, and I hadn't thought of it for a while, but Halloween is one of my favorite movies, so I decided, ah, well, if it's John Carpenter, it can't be too bad. The original, or the sort of original, The Thing, of course, this is a, this is a remake of The Thing from Another World, but I think most people know it best as one of John Carpenter's movies. And because I'm not a big, um, because I, I don't really like gory films, that's one of the reasons why I sort of avoided watching it for su such a long time. Having said that, I was really impressed with this film. And it is a very gory movie, it's almost over the top. It's that, it's that, <laughs> it's that, uh, it's that bad. But, um, but what I was uh, impressed with was, first of all, that the characters were interesting, and second of all, this movie actually has some serious atmosphere. And that's what makes it a great horror movie. It's not just the special effects and the gore and all that stuff. And, you know, the score, by the way, by Ennio Morricone, uh, who, of course, did, uh, composed the soundtracks for the Dollars Trilogy. And actually, this is, I've seen this movie more times than all of the other movies that I've gotten since then because, um, well, I watched it, I wimped out. I did watch it with the commentary first, but, but then uh, I did watch it you know, in its original form, and then I've watched this movie in two languages, languages, Spanish and uh, French. Uh, the Spanish was really funny, the Spanish dub is really funny because everybody sounds so <laughs> utterly manly. Okay, this one, I'd never seen this movie from start to finish, and I didn't know, like, holy shit, this is a three-hour movie, but now that I've seen it from start to finish, uh, I can say for certain this is my favorite Stephen King film, The Green Mile. And uh, the minute you heard Stephen King, you probably thought, okay, this is another horror movie, isn't it? But no, this is not a horror movie. This is a period drama, excellent writing, excellent uh, performances. I mean, this is, this is just a fantastic movie, and the fact that it's three hours long doesn't even... You know, th this is how you make a good three-hour movie, is that it has something interesting in it, so that you don't get tired of watching it. This is a classic that I had never seen before, and I feel a bit silly about it now that I haven't, haven't seen it before, but it just never had come up. And actually, a student's group over here actually had a showing of it. Uh, a theater not too far from here was actually showing it uh, as a re-release. And I finally thought, oh Jesus, I just have to see this movie now. And Casablanca, with Humphrey Bogart, and I never, never even knew Claude Rains is in this, and 
as time goes on, that song, you know, I've heard that song in like a shitload of commercials. I never knew that it was from this movie. The reason I feel silly for not having watched it ever was because I'm such a huge fan of Grim Fandango, and, well, basically now the secret's out, you know. Uh, year two of Grim Fandango is basically lifted straight from this movie, which is a good thing. Okay, I was talking about l long, epic-length movies, and how to do them right, how to do them wrong, and this is how they do them wrong. Uh, I still enjoyed this movie, so I'm not dissing it. Cleopatra, with Liz Taylor, uh, with Richard Burton, and who I could care less about, and with Rex Harrison, who I actually thought was really good in the movie. And uh, this is, this is uh, of course, one of the most epic bombs uh, in movie history. Um, but it had, but it has spectacular uh, production values. It's one of the most impressive films, production-wise, that I've seen. But you can tell clearly that this was supposed to be two um, three-hour movies that was then edited down to one four-hour movie. Yes, this is a four-hour movie. It's on two DVDs, but it really feels like two completely different movies. And the first half is better than the second half, uh, to be perfectly honest. And this is a movie that I knew absolutely nothing about, but apparently won some Academy Awards. It's a British film, and I'd say actually one of the best drama films I've ever seen, The King's Speech, with the excellent Jeffrey Rush. So it was nice to see Jeffrey Rush in something other than Pirates of the Caribbean. He's fantastic. Uh, Colin Firth is, a, um, is fantastic, and if you're thinking, ah, well, it's a drama film, how could it be that funny? Well, first of all, the dialogue's excellent, but also, uh, there's a lot of familiar actors from the Harry Potter movies. Okay, this one I just picked up because I was, uh, because I just wanted something to watch, and I didn't even notice it, that it says, that it says it right here on the cover from the director of Twilight. Now, I've not seen any of the Twilight movies. I know really nothing about the books or anything like that, except, you know, what, what I hear on the internet, which is not very kind. Having said that, I thought it was actually a pretty good movie, Red Riding Hood. So it's like a sort of a romance, sort of a horror romance interpretation of the classic fairy tale, which I will say they actually did uh, reference back to the original Grimm's uh, fairy tale in a few interesting, quite interesting ways. So, the thing that I don't find believable is the period setting. Everything just looks too clean and polished. It looks too produced. And you know, it's a kind of um, it's a kind of a, a super modern kind of movie. So that's probably why it didn't appeal appeal to me that much. But it was very entertaining, and it has Gary Oldman in it. This one I haven't seen the original, though. This is a remake. And I have not seen the ori I haven't seen the original. I feel I now that I should uh, see it. Um, again, I wanted to see a horror movie, but um, did it, I, I didn't know there wasn't a lot of good choices there. So I just went with this one because it has a couple of actors that I really liked. The Amityville Horror remake from 2005. Yeah, 2005, and uh, this is. Uh, um, it was a pretty okay horror movie. I mean, it's not a masterpiece or anything like that. But I did like it that there wasn't that much CG usage. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's um, it's pretty good. Uh, Ryan Reynolds is in it, and also the actress who plays Ro, who played Rose on Doctor Who, is in it, doing an American accent, which is why it took me a while to recognize her. This one, I will admit that maybe the death of one of the main actors. Uh, perhaps affected um, my, my decision to see this movie, The Bodyguard. But I'm also, I, I, I actually genuinely like Kevin Costner, so that's one of the reasons, again, why I wanted to see this. And it's a good movie, actually. It was actually very well written, the story is actually excellent. The one thing that's kind of unbelievable is perhaps the romance aspect. But I let that go, it was actually very entertaining to watch. And one interesting thing is that I learned that I Will Always Love You is not, in fact, an original Whitney Houston song. I didn't even know that, that it's a 
cover song of what is apparently a Dolly Parton song. Those were the movies I've seen while I've been here. I'm sure I'll get a couple of more before uh, I leave Scotland, but I just wanted to share these with you because this is what I've been watching so far. See you on the next one.